Everybody's Tyler at the championships checking out team number 1690 Orbit, uh, and they're absolutely phenomenal machine. This team ranked number two in the FRC top 25 uh, coming in. They've been number one before on the pole, and you just got to look at this machine. In my opinion, they have the best infinite recharge robot, and they are my favorite robot here uh, as well, too. So can't wait to talk more about that. And help me do that, by the way, I have Leary, Nadav, Noam, and Omri. And step by step on this robot, you're just going to see excellence on every step of the way as we go through. Uh, a lot of people saw their climber early on, and then you saw their moving on the moving uh, while shooting sort of thing. So let's dive more into this robot here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First updates now, supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Larry, let's start out with your uh, drivetrain here. I know you got uh, a model right there, and then we'll talk a little bit more, and then we'll start going into your cargo path. Okay, so yeah, this is our swerve module. It's like we used in the last season, and we said about it about a bit in the last Behind the Bumpers video we had. So basically, it has a, a wheel that we made ourselves, which is out of aluminum, and it has a bevel gear, and another bevel gear that's made out of brass, and together they self-lubricate each other, so that's the coolest part about our swerve. And if you want to hear more about it in the last video, Moving on to the intake. So uh, we have a standard Mechanum intake, okay? Now, um, this year we had to choose between a very flexible intake or a rigid one. So last year we used the flexible intake, as we, as we said, and it worked really well, but we did have to replace it a lot of times, and we didn't want the hassle this year, so we made a really rigid uh, intake. Now, to make it not break the whole robo robot when it has impact on it, we made a, cl a little clutch system um, right here, as you can see. There's a little lever that's connected to the sprocket that um, spins it around. Now, it has a surgical tubing that connects to the actual arm of the intake. Now, when we want to open the intake, this goes down, and it pulls the surgical tubing and the arm down. And when there's impact on the intake, it just collapses back into the robot and there's no harm on the robot or on the motor. So that's about the intake. Can we see the uh, intake come down? And then, uh, do we have a, yeah, let's put a piece of carbon and then we'll go into your yeah, conveyor sure. system then too. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so um, next we have the, um, uh, conveyor system? Conveyor system, yeah. We have a horizontal one and a vertical one. Now the horizontal conveyor system, the belts are powered by the same motor that powers the intake. And the vertical one is powered by a different motor so that there is, so we can control the uh, balls that are coming into the shooter. Now to control all this, we have three infrared uh, uh, sensors throughout the whole uh, system. Um, one in here and then in the middle and then at the end and then we know exactly where the balls are at any time. And we have a color sensor that detects the color of the ball so that we know which one we have, and, and then we can uh, do whatever we want with it. So yeah, that's about the system. Next to the shooter. So this season we wanted to have like the lowest center of mass as we could. So this is why, as you can see, the turret uh, gearbox is mounted here at the bottom of the, oh, wow, yeah. of the robot and goes up through this pipe to the top. And that's it. We also put it two Falcons instead of one so that the shooter could be very responsive. And also because of the gyroscopic effect of this wheel that spins during the entire match, we added another Falcon because it was hard to control it very fast. In addition, we have an adjustable hood, as you can see. The first revision was without this top roller. And after the first Israeli district competition, we saw that many balls just start jumping out of the target. This is why we added this top roller. And actually, in one week, we built an entire new shooter and replaced it. So to the next competition at the second Israeli district, like the third, this was the second for us, we had a new shooter and it works perfectly. Another thing about our shooter is that we wanted it to have at least one full rotation, so you could shoot at any angle at any given time in the game. 
and even a little bit more spare. This is why we have such a long uh, cable, as you can see here. And because we didn't want it to get staggered around the entire tower, we have here many 3D printed parts, as you can see here, here, also on the other side of the tower. We'll just let the cable go around nicely and without getting in trouble. Now let's go on to the climber. So this season we wanted to have a climber that will be with the least amount of actions to get to the traversal rung. Yeah. This is why we eventually chose the thrust reacting climber, which has only two main actions. Yep. The first one is just lifting yourself up. During this action, a lot of amazing thing happens, like pushing the truss, the truss and just lifting yourself up and then going to the traversal rung. And the second action is just letting go of the, the, the telescope and it will let the robot uh, release the second uh, rung and just stay on the traversal rung. Now maybe we can take a step back and see the entire thing opens. So actually now we can pull down this telescopic arm and when we get up, this V-shaped arm, the truss reactor we call it, will go against the truss and we lift the entire robot in a certain okay. angle that will let him take with this, with this hook the traversal rung. As you can see here, this kind of shape gets against the bar, so it happens like this, and then it gets the traversal uh, rung. Another stuff that we saw that at the first competition, we, we realized that the, the thing that took the, the most amount of time at the entire climb session was actually the aiming on the bar, because this concept made us, we, we needed to be very, very precise on the bar, like in left, right uh, sizes. Sure. So if you will come here, you can see this small arm, which released when the, the truss reactor falls, it pulls like a brake cable from bicycle. It, is, it stays here. And then this arm with a rubber band can, can get open. And there is a little camera at the end. So then the robot gets parallel to the line at the floor and also in a certain distance from the line, which will ensure, ensure that the climb will work in 100% of the time. And also it makes the climb much, much faster. And faster and very, very good. What is this actually made out of? So there is a small carbon pipe here at the bottom, and this yeah. is just like the, the electronics. This is the, the cable for the camera. The camera sits here and looks at the line that is over here. That's really cool. Let's hop in the programming next. Uh, so we're going to hand it over to Noam and Omri, uh, talk more about some of the programming aspects going to it. You know, when I when I think 1690, that, that's what comes to my mind. It's just some of the best programming in the world in regards to uh, FRC. We've seen your robot shoot on the move. We've seen automation happen. Uh, so walk us through some of the incredible features on this robot from that side. Yeah, so our robot is like almost fully automated. So what we have, most, most teams have like a shoot button, we have a don't shoot button actually. <laughs> sure, yeah. So the robot decides when to shoot and then the driver could tell the robot, now I'm not shooting. So from day one, we figured that we'll have to, uh, to have like shooting on the move skills because you know, it's called rapid react and like there's a lot of defense and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. So what we thought is like a lot of teams, what they do is shot, shoot from a lot of places on the field, then create a map of like values um, like as a function of the distance. But we thought it would be impossible to test every distance at every velocity. So what we made is like a shooting simulation um, that takes into account all the forces acting on the ball, such as like gravity, Magnus force, air drag, like all this stuff. And we calculated the trajectories the ball has uh, in order to get to the target. So if you look here, we have, for example, this is the, all the possible trajectories, like from five meters to the, to the target. So how do we pick the best one? We look the, uh, at the distance as a function of the hood angle and the RPM of the, of the motors. And we take the partial derivative of this function according to like the, the hood angle and the, and the RPM, like the robot's velocity, and try to minimize it. So we take the shot that minimizes this derivative. What it gives us is the like is it compensates for like errors and uh, mechanical stuff because when things change, it will like have the less effect on the on the target. So what the simulation yields is this like 4D graph. So we have the distance from the target the robot's velocity, the robot's radial velocity, actually, 
and the height of this graph is the angle of the hood and like the color is the, the RPM of the motor. So the more red it is, like it's the more fast. So that takes care of the radial velocity and the tangential velocity. We just have this, this, uh, this uh, 3D vector of the shot and we have the 2D vector of like the, the drive of the swerve. So when you subtract those, you get a new 3D vector which like compensates for the for the driving. Makes a lot of sense on that. Um, talk to me about a little bit more what's on uh, screen uh, for this. Hand over to Omri to speak more about that. Uh, love to see you describe more of your pathing and what you do for that. Yeah, so as you can see, our robot is very automatic. What we see on the screen is what the robot knows about, about itself, well, most of it. We can see the line, which is where the robot is. Using our self-made post tracker, uh, we merge data from the swerve encoders, the gyro, and the limelight, and we're using Kalman filter to always know where we are. So there's a line here that shows where the robot is, and you can see the data. Because we have infrared sensors and color sensors, when the line gets thicker, it means that we have more balls. We can see X where we uh, pick up a ball. We can see green Xs where the line resets our position. And since our last competition, we had, uh, actually added a cool new algorithm to detect when we're skidding. So where there are a few uh, uh, orange dots, like over here, that means that the robot's scared. It's probably because we hit a wall or a defender hit us. So we know not to believe what the swerve says, where the swerve says we are when we are skidding. So basically, almost everything in this robot is automated. So this is actually just from one match, by the way, too, Yeah, right? this is just 20 seconds. You can see... Oh, just 20 seconds? Yeah, this is just 20 seconds. We, Holy cow. Yeah, our driver likes to go all around the field. You can see more over here. This is where we pick up a ball. Uh, this is where we shoot, yeah. and we have uh, tabs on the side to see the different subsystems. We can see the turret uh, following its trajectory. You can see the uh, the hood. This is incredible, man. Yeah, and all the dots on the bottom are when we detected skidding during our match. Wow, 16. I mean, I'm, I'm left speechless. 1690. This is absolutely phenomenal, and uh, what a testament to how great your your team uh, has continually risen and become. Uh, you know, I think uh, your team. I think about you know, you got to the World Finals in uh, 2016, right? And your team has just continued to keep making incredible machines year after year for that. So, wish you best of luck here at uh, Worlds as well too. Of course, a division favorite, and we can't wait to see how you do. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you very much. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in robotics scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first chose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.